Good afternoon. We're here with Harry Gottsacker and Mark Wilkins, drivers of the number 33 Elantra N TCR for Brian Herta Autosport and the most recent TCR race winners, having just won the Hyundai Monterey Sports Car Championship at Laguna Seca. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? Thank you. How does it feel to have your first win of the season under the belt? Uh, you can go first, Mark. <laughs> Oh, I mean, amazing. Uh, it, it feels like it was a long time coming uh, in, in what was a pretty uh, challenging season. Lots of learning, uh, lots new with the Elantra and TCR and, and a lot of development. Um, but we knocked on the door a lot and uh, it was a bit of a character building season, I would say. And, and it all kind of came together at, at Laguna and, and it was awesome. Yeah, at the end of the day, it just felt really good. You know, uh, we kind of had a slow start, but uh, we've been up there all season long. So uh, really just glad to have one on the board now. And it couldn't have come at a better race, right? I mean, if you're going to win one all year, that's the one to win. Yeah, in my opinion, you know, that track's beautiful. And, you know, it's Hyundai's home race. So what else could you ask for? Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. It just came together at the right spot. Great venue, um, you know, major launch of the Elantra N in front of a, a big group of, of our fans and, and owners uh, from uh, the NorCal club um, was really exciting. We had a lot of people cheering us on from corporate and, and just a lot of really strong, positive uh, energy that day. And, uh, you know, it was just a really clean, you know, really well-run race uh, from start to finish. Here he had a great drive and, and passed over. The, the car was just uh, hooked up and just, just came together. Yeah, it feels really good and, and a lot of momentum now to carry us forward to the last two races of the season. So going, speaking of the last two races of the season, and first we have to say hello, we've got somebody here from Peru. Saludos. Hey. Deborah, Pedro, Madeline, hello. Thank you for joining us today. Um, heading into the last two uh, races of the season, VIR has been good for both of you, and then you, you as teammates, won the uh, finale last year at Sebring, but Road Atlanta is where you claimed the championship two years ago, Mark. What do you think is going to be a better or the, the most compatible for the new Elantra, VIR or Road America or, or Road Atlanta, or are they both? Yeah, I would have thought that Laguna might have been a bit of a, a challenge for us uh, with the low grip surface, uh, to be honest. I always saw, sort of saw VIR and, and um, Road Atlanta as being really great, strong tracks for this car. Um, and then Laguna was fantastic. So I think we've, we've, we've been learning a lot. We've really developed the car. We have it in a good spot. Um, and so I'm pretty confident that we'll be strong at VIR and Road Atlanta. I mean, two just awesome fast race tracks that uh, should really suit the handling characteristics um, of, of the Elantra and TCR. And um, I think we're gonna get some nice cool weather too, which is, which is always nice behind the wheel. Harry, do you have a preference of one track over the other? Oh, that's hard to say. You know, they both have uh, some legendary S's, but uh, I really like Road Atlanta, you know, uh, that one with Petite and everything going on at the same time. That's a really fun track, but, you know, uh, not dog and VIR either. That's a great uh, racetrack as well. I like them both. The old oak bend or oak tree or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've got a bunch of questions that people have sent in, but before we dive into those, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the changes to the team this year. You guys have both been with the team several years now. We've added a fourth car. We've added a new technical director and David Brown, someone who, with so much experience, he engineered Ayrton Senna. He engineered uh, Nigel Mansell to his championship. And then this new race car this year with the Elantra. How helpful or what is it like for you as a driver to know that you have experience behind you like this? And how helpful has it been to developing this new car? Yeah, it's really been uh, incredible learning from David this year. You know, this uh, new car has uh, definitely been the first time I've ever driven a brand new car of any sort. So having an engineer like David Brown, uh, getting, getting to work with him has just been amazing so far this season. Yeah, you know, it, it, David um, just has so much experience. I must say it's a little maybe intimidating at the start of the year. Um, there's just such a wealth of knowledge um, and so much to learn. Uh, for, for both Harry and I and, and the team. Um, but, you know, Brian Herta Autosports has just been growing every year. Um, you know, we've had so many successful seasons now. Um, you know, Hyundai's given us a great product. 
you know, the challenge of developing a new car is, is really fun, um, but it, it has its challenges uh, like we've experienced this year. Um, but I think, you know, the wealth of knowledge that we have in the camp and, and just understanding that it takes time to get these things sorted out and to just stay positive and focused and, you know, take the positives away from every weekend um, and work on the, the negatives. And, you know, I think this year, we just really focused on the areas we needed to improve. And we kind of got it to a point now where I feel like the synergy is just really, really great between everybody and uh, a, a big weight off our shoulders, obviously uh, at Laguna. Um, and, you know, we're just gonna have fun. I think, you know, we're gonna go to VIR uh, with a car we know is, is awesome. Um, we're just gonna keep tuning on it, uh, keep getting the most out of it and, and just have fun, uh, which is what it's all about. And I, I'm confident we'll be, we'll be right in the mix. Well, looking at the, all the hardware that sits behind you, you, you have an experienced engineer, but you will both also bring a lot of experience to the table. Nice, nice backdrop. I like Harry's. Harry's got a good setup there. That's awesome. Is that Laguna I see behind you, Harry? Yes, ma'am. Nice. <laughs> We're going to jump into these questions. I have two pages of questions that people have sent in here. So the first one, um, so just to let everybody know, you're third right now, uh, 30 points behind second. So that win took, gave you a big jump up in the championship. Harry's tied for second overall in pole positions in TCR and IMSA with four. He had one this, earlier this year. I'm forgetting Lime Rock. No. Lime Rock? Yeah, I'm forgetting too. I think it was Seabring. Seabring. Okay. But then also uh, you had one at Road Atlanta last year. So that bodes well for, for you both going to that event. First question I have is, from Susie, she didn't say where she's from, but what are the biggest differences between the Veloster and the Elantra? I'm considering buying one of the two of these cars. Yeah, I, I mean, um, they are a bit different. Elantra is a, um, you know, has a longer wheelbase, a little bit of a bigger car, obviously, four door. Um, you know, in terms of how they drive, I'd say, you know, quite similar overall, to be honest, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things that are very similar between the cars, engine, gearbox, um, whether it's DCT or manual, um, you know, driving dynamic wise, uh, you know, what you'd expect out of a, a car with a little bit longer wheelbase, a little bit more stability, um, you know, but what we've found in the race car comparing the two is that they're actually both very quite similar in terms of, you know, how well they turn in, make that positive turn in and, you know, the, the ELSD in the, uh, in the road car just pulls the car through the corner. And of course the Elantra has the Michelins, uh, which I think, um, you know, just adds another, you know, element of grip. Uh, to the car and, and, you know, I'm excited. I haven't taken the Elantra and really around the track at pace yet. Uh, but I, you know, I think it's going to feel very much like the Veloster and both are just awesome platforms and as proven on the racetrack, um, with, with wins on, on both sides. So, um, two great options, hard to choose, I guess, uh, comes down to personal preference and what you need. If you need a little bit more space, uh, but you, you know, say you want to take the kids to school or, or have some room in the back and, and then otherwise hit the track to run some laps. Maybe the Elantra uh, is the car. Um, but if you want, you know, really small, tiny car uh, that's super nimble, uh, then the Veloster is a fantastic option. Harry, you drive a Veloster. That's your daily drive, right? Yeah, so uh, like Mark said, they're extremely similar. Uh, both have plenty of power in the street cars and the race cars. Uh, but that's like Mark said too. You know, you can expect a little bit more stability with the Elantra, but uh, I really like the quickness the Velocitor has too. So they're neck and neck with each other. It's a they're both great cars. We've got to say hello to Eric Seda. He's joined us today. He's an official influencer and one of the members of the Florida and fan club that's been so awesome. supportive to our team. So hello, Eric. Any of you that are with us today, please feel free to put questions in the in your comment bar and we'll get to them. Next question is, Harry, it seems like you usually qualify. How different is the Elantra in qualifying? That's from Peter from Gainesville. Hmm. Uh, you know, race cars are extremely similar. Uh, it's definitely, uh, it's a little different, I guess, putting the heat in the rear tires, the Elantra compared to Velocitor, but uh, still very similar at the, at the end of the day. It's uh, hard to tell a difference at some tracks. 
This one is from Michael from Salinas, so maybe he was at the race. He says, congrats on your win at Laguna Seca. How big of a deal is it to win Hyundai's home race? And what was the deal with the fan club, and how do I participate? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, Laguna was just the best place ever to have the weekend we had. Um, you know, I think it was funny because there was a lot of pressure and a lot of weight on our shoulders to get that result. But at the same time, I think just the excitement and enthusiasm from everybody there just made it really fun and energetic. And so, you know, when we got to the end, it just it felt like, you know, just a fantastic uh, result to celebrate, but with all the people there that really brought us up to, to enjoy that. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it, it was a bit surreal. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we want everybody to come out to the track. I mean, it was so cool to have so many Veloster N owners uh, out there. I mean, that it, the display at the Elantra N reveal uh, with all of the sort of the Lamas style of all the Veloster Ns, uh, just to see what the owners have done, just such a passionate group of people. And I think that's what, that's what we love to see. And yes, come out uh, to, to a race, come check it out, the N Lounge. Uh, you know, come see what, the, what we're doing with the cars under the tent between sessions. I mean, it's just so much fun. There's so much activity. It's a real sort of locker room behind the scenes type program. And uh, we, if you're, if you're a Hyundai fan or you're an N owner, we want you out there. Come and cheer us on. We, we love it. I'll expand on that just a little bit to everybody that's with us today. So we started something new this year and it's called the N Lounge. So if you're a Hyundai owner, you bring your keys to the racetrack and you have hospitality under our race tent and you're bumping elbows with our drivers all the time. You can meet Harry and Mark up close. You can watch the crew work on their car between sessions. It's, it's a, I've, all the years I've worked in racing, I've never seen something like this for the fans. It's an incredible experience. So, uh, Harry, this is from, oh, there's not a name with this one, but it's, what are your long-term aspirations in, do you want to race prototypes? Uh, yeah, you know, I've definitely would always uh, love to, I've always dreamed of racing a prototype at Daytona, but, uh, you know, my aspirations are sports car racing, you know, I just want to be able to wake up every day and say I'm a sports car driver, wherever it is or whatever kind of car it is, you know, I just love driving and uh, hopefully I can do it for the rest of my life. That's awesome. And, and if you do end up in a prototype, you've got um, a good coach and your teammate who's won the Rolex 24 in a prototype. Are you, are you sporting your Rolex today, Mark Wilkins? Uh, no, I, 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 it only comes out in special occasions, but uh, yeah, I think that was, that was a lot of years of work to get there. And uh, yeah, I don't, I wear it very rarely, um, but it's, it's definitely a race I'll, I'll remember forever. Um, yeah, a lot of years of trying, a lot of years of heartbreak, a lot of years of coming very close. Um, and somewhere, I thought we'd win in, in the last sort of 15 minutes of the 24, we, we were out. Um, so a bit of heartbreak in there, but that's, that's what it's all about. So no, it's cool to, to pull it out on special occasions and just remember uh, that experience. And yeah, I mean, I want Harry to, to, to have that experience. I mean, it's just, it's just surreal. It's just so much energy and it's crazy. Uh, all I think about with that race is fireworks in the bus stop uh, at midnight and the warning they give you on the radio about that and maybe the 3 to 5 a.m. stint in the rain, um, you know, when you smell you smell campfire smoke and there's no grip and you're tired and you haven't eaten and you've been up for a day and a half already. It's, it's crazy in, in all the right ways. It's wicked. That brings up something really interesting. How distracting are those fireworks? when you're racing oh, and do you hear this? You know what? Not as much as you think because you're so focused. Um, they, they come out and you kind of go, Oh, that's cool. That's like, you know, you're, you just focus on the track and hitting your marks. And, um, especially if it's raining, you're there's, there's not a lot of mental capacity left to focus on anything else. You're just trying to keep the car on the road and not make a mistake. Um, but uh yeah i mean that and the and the, the campfire smoke so you're on the banking and you know it just kind of hangs in the track just a cool <laughs> cool atmosphere um yeah uh, not really much else like it really to be honest just uh yeah just just crazy and then after it's all over and you have a chance to settle down and the adrenaline comes off you realize how tired you truly are um it's, it's pretty wild 
So Harry, here's another question for you from Maddie from Florida, and she wants to know how long you've been racing. I've been racing since I was 13 years old. Uh, you know, just go karts every day. Started out doing that, and uh, you know, worked my way up the ladder slowly. <laughs> okay. Next question um, is: um, Where has the Elantra performed the best? Hmm. Well, technically, Laguna Seca. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would agree with Harry. I mean, um, I think Watkins Glen, it was, it was pretty solid. Uh, there's been a few, few tracks that have been really strong. Um, but I think as we've kind of evolved through the year and, and, you know, on setup and just development in that, um, I would say Laguna and, and hopefully we'll be very strong for the, the last few of the year. Uh, next one is from Steven from Pittsburgh. What is it like having Brian Herta as a boss and does he ever drive? Oh, well, I haven't seen him drive, uh, the TCR car yet, but didn't he, uh, do the 24 hour race with y'all a couple years ago, uh, Mark? He did. So Brian drove at Laguna in the I-30, uh, in 2018, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they did a, a an enduro there. Um, and then he drove at a test we did. So yes, I've seen him drive and, and to work with Brian's great. I mean, I mean, just uh, uh, incredible career uh, mentor, somebody who just totally understands everything to do with racing. Um, awesome guy, just, you know, keeps the pressure on in, in all the right ways. And, and, you know, as being a driver knows what's knows what it's all about. Um, yeah, I mean, just just a, a, I, and talk, we talk about wealth of knowledge. And, you know, there's just so much there. Um, so it, it's just, I think that's really why and, and how we've had so much success is, is, you know, what Brian's been able to put together here is just really quite special, to be honest. Somebody asked if you have pets, what are they? I have one uh, golden doodle, a little puppy right now. <laughs> What's its name? Potter, like Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, Mark? um yeah we have uh, three dogs uh three dogs and and the two kids so it's uh it's busy <laughs> your kids don't classify as pets mark <laughs> sometimes well i don't know depending, depending on the time of day it's questionable no I mean, yeah they, they keep us on our toes but you know technically three dogs yeah so are you telling me that you go away to these races and leave your wife home with three dogs and two kids yes wow I'm not saying you're awesome. Than that. awesome wife. <laughs> <laughs> agreed, agreed. Okay, so um, oh, someone asked, what are your expectations for the next two races? I think we've answered that. Oh, this is a good question from James in Atlanta. Who are your biggest competitors and who is the hardest to pass? Hmm. Good That's question. Good question. Uh, you know, uh, I find myself uh, battling with Ryan uh, Norman a lot, you know, but uh, that's always good fun, clean racing. The hardest to pass, though, that's a hard one. Uh, I find it kind of my strength is passing people. I haven't found the uh, arch nemesis in those aspects yet, I don't think. I, I don't know. For me, Michael Lewis came to mind pretty quick. I don't know why. Um, uh, yeah, he's pretty hardcore. Um, and as far as racing you super hard but super clean uh, which is awesome um and then and then parker i mean in the last uh, the last race at laguna uh, you know he was racing me super hard um you know these those are guys in our camp they're but they're awesome competitors i mean in terms of outside of that um yeah that's a that's a good question i mean it, there, there's a lot of great a lot of great guys maybe ryan eversley in the honda uh, always puts up a big fight. I mean, uh, those guys are, are pretty solid uh, always. So, um, no, we, we've got our hands full all the time. Uh, maybe And some of our other competitor uh, Veloster teams, um, there's some really quick guys uh, in, in those cars too. So, yeah, there there's a few, um, but that's what we want. You, you know, makes you really think and plan your moves uh, accordingly. That's for sure. Someone else asked, um, and they didn't leave their name, but who, how do you work with the other Veloster teams? Do you work together? Yeah, I definitely say we work together. You know, we're one big Hyundai family at the end of the day. Uh, we always have each other's backs. 
I'd say to add Absolutely. on to that question, we share engineering resources, I think, with our engineer, Kyle Compton, works with the Brian Herta Hyundai customer support teams. I, I believe so, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, Harry, this is another one for you from David in Detroit. Harry, what's the biggest difference between Pirellis and Michelins for racing? I'm assuming because when you race in another series, you race on Pirellis, is that right? Yeah, uh, so in SRO you have the Pirelli, uh, and then in IMSA you have the Michelin. Uh, quite different, but, uh, you know, it's just kind of how fast they come up to temperature. I feel like the Michelin maybe comes up to temperature a little quicker, but, uh, you know, there's always different situations uh, for different tires, uh, whether it's better or worse that weekend and such, but uh, they're definitely quite different. Interesting. And then this one's for you too. It says, Harry, seems like you fish a lot. What rigging do you suggest? What, what? Rigging do you suggest? Well, it depends on what kind of fishing you're doing, obviously. But, uh, you know, uh, I go heavy duty no matter what. <laughs> so is, is that what your, your favorite pastime is, is fishing? Yeah, I love to fish. Uh, I love to go kart. Um, love to ride my Harley. Um, have fun, you know, whatever I can do. What about you, Mark? When you're not racing, what are you doing? Um, I'm trying to uh, do some off-roading. Uh, I've got a little, uh, well, it's a single-seater, technically side-by-side, -side, but a single-seater. And I like to take a rip around through the forest. And then uh, if it's winter, snowmobiling um, a lot, as much as I can do. It's, it's great practice, again, ripping through the trees and keeping your mind sharp when we're not doing a whole lot of racing. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, that's motor wise. I mean, now with the kids, it's, uh, just running around dealing with, uh, with them and, and having fun with them. We I like to take them out on the property and rip around, get a little ranger that they, they want to go run laps. So kind of made a little bit of a course back there and, uh, and they love that. So, um, yeah, lots to keep busy, but, uh, looking forward to upcoming sled season soon. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up sledding, and I know a lot of other race car drivers have been successful ski racers or snow sports. What is the correlation there? Is it the the line or? Yeah, I think, I mean, I look at snowmobiling as it's basically like, I mean, they're public trails, so keeping safety uh, in mind, but um, it's kind of like the Nürburgring. You never know what's coming. It's an endless run of corners. And you rarely run the same corner, you know, more than once, especially if you go on a long trip. Um, and so it's just really good on the mind because you, you know, you, you, there's very little margin for error. So, um, you know, you're just trying to plot the best, best line through a corner, just seeing the corner for the first time. There's also sleds coming the other direction. So you have to be mindful of that. Um, and then you can really open it up in some areas and they're quite, quite fast. So, it's just really great fun practice. And if you find yourself sort of at a closed course type situation, you can really get going and, uh, and there's so much grip. And so it's just really, really, really fun to, to get on there and, and go. I mean, just for reference, they're about a, over 160 horsepower and they only weigh in the 450 pound range. So quite light. And if it's the trail is groomed and hard packed, the traction is um, unbelievable. Uh, so no, it's just a good, good mental practice and a lot of fun. And, uh, it's not as cold as people think. <laughs> Harry, do you do that in Texas? Probably not. Maybe on water. Uh, we, you know, we, uh, wake surf and, uh, you know, ski on the water and stuff, but yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, Adila writes in here and says, do you see your kids getting into racing even at this young age? Um, my youngest is just about to turn two and i would say with him it's possible um <laughs> my my five-year-old uh is maybe not quite as interested um in it as uh as our younger one he's looking at the ranger and if he doesn't get his ride after in fact my wife just took him on a ride right now he just came <laughs> back and and uh First thing, if he sees it and he doesn't get a ride, not a happy camper. So <laughs> he just wants to go fast and rip around and all over the balance bike. And so, yeah, he's showing signs of being interested, but he's pretty, still pretty young. So it's in the genes, which actually leads to the next question from Annie in Noblesville, Indiana. She says, 
Mark, I heard you are related to Patrick Long. Is that true? And have you ever raised him? Yes and yes. So he's my brother-in-law. And uh, yes, we have raced each other um, in prototypes and in GT cars, I think. Um, yeah, he's always a really good, he's a great guy and a, and a really tough competitor. Um, but we haven't raced against each other uh, in quite a long time now. So it would probably be going back to 2007-ish, I would say. Um, but uh, yeah, always hard, hard racer. Just, just at, you know, his resume speaks for itself. But uh, we have some fun at the cottage and, uh, and, and relaxing and enjoying the time away from the track as well. Um, but when we get to the track, yeah, he's, he's pretty hardcore. I would um, not want to be in the woods the day that you're both out there on snow sleds. <laughs> he did do it <laughs> once, and that was it. And that's going back a long time. I have a feeling that gets pretty competitive. Harry, oh, question oh, from, yeah. Lou, from Lou Budkey here. It says, Harry, what's the secret to getting big northern pike in Elkhart Lake? Uh, just real worms. <laughs> Real worms. <laughs> nice. Um, next question is, where is the race shop and do you go there? Yeah, so our race shop's in uh, Indianapolis and uh, I've been there three or four times. Um, Mark's probably been there quite a bit. About the same for me, actually. Um, not, not too far of a trip, but in the last few years with travel being a little more restricted, um, I haven't been but I'd love to, I'd love to go back. It's, it's a, it's an amazing facility. Um, big, lots of space and, and a lot of race cars in there right now. Yep. So our shop is on main street in uh, right, right kitty corner from the Indianapolis motor speedway. Fans are welcome to contact us online and schedule a tour. It, it is a really impressive shop. Um, next question is what do you do when you go testing? whole lot of things <laughs> but yeah you know uh, I like to think like you know the mo most amount of laps you can possibly do the better you know uh, you just try to collect all the data you can possibly imagine yeah data collection um, you know our, our engineer comes up with a game plan for us that we review prior to the test so we can see what items we're going to test uh, when we're going to test them it's very um, very well laid out for us. So Harry and I both know how much time we're going to drive. And obviously these things change. So we, we have a plan, we show up, and then basically the plan evolves or changes pretty much. That's just a given. Um, but we have our list of items we want to work through. And what we would consider a successful test would, would be getting through all of those items and getting some good quality feedback on those so that when we go to the next race event, we know what we want to start with, with the car setup wise or what worked, what didn't work, what we want to try more of. Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of different factors there, but it's, it, there's a lot of work that goes into planning for uh, each of the tests that we, we do to get the most out of them. Eric Sater wrote in, do you guys think doing auto, what do you, or what do you think of doing autocross and go-karts and can they sharpen your track skills? Oh yeah, I'd say a whole bunch. Both of them are great tools that you could use to go carry out onto the big tracks, you know. Yeah, I, would, I would agree with Harry for sure. Um, both are awesome. I mean, autocross is a riot. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it's just a good test for your car and, and for yourself. And there's typically a lot of great competition there. Um, and then, you know, go-karts from a young age, super important just to learn that skill set early. And, um, and then when you're older, it's just fun. So yeah, the more time you can spend driving uh, in, in either discipline is, is great. I mean, it's fun and you, and you learn a lot and your skill set's always developing. What is it with go-karts? Every professional driver seems to have come, with go, go, come from go-karts. Is it because you're so low to the ground and the handling reference it gives you or the racing or what is it about go-karts that makes it such an efficient start for racing? I think it's a whole bunch of combination of things, but it's just a really s the simplest form of racing something, I think, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's the, the main roots. You really probably learn how to feel the, the cart and the track and the... Yeah, everything. Yeah, and it's fast too, like your, the handling, you, you know, the, the speed is quite fast. So your, your mind, you train your mind to be on it um, 
roll as much speed as it's the same same principles as we do in the bigger cars um, apply in the racing super competitive and close so you gain uh, you know passing skill sets and you know your your optimum lines and you know depending on what kind of cart you're driving or how much power it has or it's if it's much like a shifter I mean it's it's like indie car levels of concentration and reaction time and quickness so depending on what you're driving but there's just so much to gain out of out of all of the the different levels of karting and and uh, competitiveness in in all of those different levels so for me it was a lot of four stroke go-kart so more momentum so you learn to keep the speed up because if you let the motor bog down it's only a five and a half or six and a half horsepower then you're toast and you, uh, you'll get freight trains so you learn a lot about not using much brake and rolling speed and keeping the, the motor schooled up and then shifter carts was basically hanging on, <laughs> just grabbing the gears and ripping around as quick as you could stay on the track, basically. And it was an awesome workout. One more question here. Lucy asks what you are going to do with the rest of your day. So what's an afternoon like where you're at? I'm going dove hunting this afternoon, actually. Harry, you're an outdoorsman. <laughs> Fisherman. Hunter. And you, Mark? Um, yeah, what time is it? Uh, kids. 6.30. <laughs> It'll be all about kids for the rest of the day. Everybody's home. Uh, so we'll spend some time and have some fun outside before it gets too cool. It's starting to get kind of, kind of chilly up here now. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. We'll get them off to bed and have a couple of hours to relax uh, a little later this evening. One more question just came in from Deborah Turner. Guys, do you play golf or do you both just race with golf carts instead? <laughs> Laugh out loud. I mean, I like to say I play golf, but I'm really pretty bad. I usually end up tearing the golf cart up by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. I played golf last week, actually. That was my first game in uh, in a few years, and uh, I think I my best shots were the first few, and then it was quickly downhill from there. So no, I find it a little bit frustrating, but it's nice to be on the course and. Uh, the golf carts were no fun. They were far too limited. They didn't let you get away with too much. So <laughs> took a little bit of fun out of it, but uh, it probably saved the cart at the end of the day for them. Nice. Well, thank you very much both for joining us. And thanks to all of you who tuned in today and who, se who sent us questions. We appreciate it. We want to encourage you to check out the newest series produced by Hyundai and Brian Herta Autosport called Next Level. You can find it on Hyundai's YouTube page. Uh, Mark just recently got a preview of the new Kona N and the Elantra N, and that's the next episode of Next Level coming out. How much fun was that, Mark? <laughs> awesome. We found awesome. some tight back roads in the California mountains, and uh, the Co I was driving the Kona N, and uh, it is like a go-kart. It, it was absolutely crazy fun. Um, yeah, it was pretty wild. But, yeah, stay tuned. That footage should be pretty pretty fun to watch and uh i just want to take these cars on the track it's i mean it's that's really what i want to, i just want to take them on the track they're they're super awesome and uh can't wait for everyone to get to try them so there you have it you're going to be able to buy a, a kona n or an elantra n soon and in the meantime please uh stay tuned we're going to be racing at virginia international raceway next weekend where the feature race there on sunday october 10th you can follow us on our social media or on imsa.com for live timing and scoring. NBC Track Pass for television. After that, it's the finale at Road Atlanta, the Petit Le Mans. And that comes on uh, November 14th, Friday, November 14th. So thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.